Thank you for attending the webinar. Uh, my name is Frederick Brock, and I'm going to take you guys through the JavaScript webinar, uh, JavaScript SDK webinar. Uh, this morning, we're going to be looking at a sample chat application, a single room chat application that conveys some of the core concepts of PubNub. Uh, it doesn't go through every feature and every component that PubNub offers, but it will get you a jump start, give you a jump start uh, in developing your real time applications. Um, So the agenda this morning, uh, we're going to look at how you participate in the webinar. Um, I realize you guys are on mute and, and we're able to speak, but there is a uh, mechanism you can use within GoToWebinar to uh, ask questions, and we have uh, folks on staff here to answer those questions for you. Um, if it's a question that many people are asking, I'll probably stop and address the questions to the entire group. Uh, if not, we might address it uh, directly to you. If it's something that we can't answer, uh, then we'll probably ask you to send in a support ticket or uh, follow up with us after the webinar. Uh, but we really do love to hear from our customers and, and see what you're doing with PubNub. Uh, so definitely uh, feel free to ask questions and ask as many as, uh, as you can. Yeah. We're going to look at what PubNub is, uh, kind of give you a description of what PubNub is and what we do. Then we're going to start looking at a little bit more detailed information around the JavaScript API. Uh, we'll follow that up with pointers to resources that you can use to further uh, your, your knowledge of the SDK. And we're going to talk about upcoming events, have a quick Q&A session, and then at the end, there's a quick survey uh, so you can win an OzoBot. Uh, so please do fill out the survey. It gives us feedback on how the webinar was and what, uh, what things you might want to see in the future or what things you didn't feel worked out, uh, however that may be. And uh, please uh, complete the survey at the end of the, uh, the webinar. So participation, uh, please ask questions. Uh, there is a questions box in the GoToWebinar um, uh, toolbar that's probably docked on one side of your screen. Uh, you enter your text where it says enter a question for the staff here, uh, and then you'll see a response uh, in the uh, bigger text box, the one on the top. So please ask questions, and uh, if that doesn't work, or if you have a more detailed question that's more architectural related, uh, please do send in a ticket to support at pubnub.com and uh, myself or uh, one of the other uh, staff members will follow up with you. Okay. So what is PubNub? Uh, PubNub is a globally distributed real-time uh, data stream network. Uh, so we're a DSN, and what that means is we manage data flowing from applications to other applications across platform globally uh, so that you can write real-time solutions such as chat or IoT, uh, many, many different types of solutions out there uh, that can be implemented using PubNub as a core. Uh, we're easy, uh, easy to use, uh, very, very simple API, and you'll see that uh, throughout the webinar this morning. Uh, we're very reliable and far less costly than doing it yourself. Uh, if you were to try to set up this type of infrastructure, it would uh, probably run you, you know, in the several hundred thousand range, uh, and then you would still have a hard time scaling it. Uh, we do that for you, so we take all that, uh, the burden of managing that infrastructure out of the way uh, and monitor that uh, infrastructure real time so that uh, we can ensure that your applications are up uh, and supported. We have over 70 different SDKs. Um, at the core, PubNub is, a, is an API, uh, so we've built SDKs on top of that API uh, to allow you to develop applications uh, using almost any popular language or environment uh, that you can think of from JavaScript all the way over into uh, Clojure land. So. Continuing on, um, PubNub offers different components uh, and different uh, uh, product features um, as part of our offering to our customers. Our core is publish and subscribe. That allows you to send and receive uh, data uh, across platform, across applications, or across devices. Uh, we have a concept known as stream controllers, sometimes referred to as channel groups, that allow you to aggregate data from, from a channel. Uh, and we'll get into what a channel is in just a minute, but a channel is the mechanism we use to uh, determine a destination for a message. But you can aggregate these channels together uh, and consume that data similar to a Twitter feed. We offer the ability to monitor who is listening on a channel uh, and who is not listening on a channel or when they leave a channel. 
uh, storage and playback. Uh, data flowing across the network can be stored uh, in our infrastructure indefinitely. Uh, it's configurable. You can store data for 30 days, one day, um, or, or longer, uh, and you can play that data back if you need to. We also offer the ability to uh, integrate push technology uh, using our SDK uh, the way you would use for publish and subscribe. However, we'll forward those messages on to various push service providers such as GCM or APNS. Uh, we need your data to be secure, so we have Access Manager that allows you to lock down who has access to a channel uh, in a fine-grained way. You can lock it down for read-write or read-only or write-only uh, and modify. We also have uh, real-time analytics. Uh, if you want to monitor uh, real-time traffic in your application, uh, we do have a real-time analytics dashboard uh, that you can use to do that. Okay, JavaScript API. Uh, so we've broken down the JavaScript API into the, the core concepts. Uh, first, we're going to take a look at how you initialize uh, and subscribe uh, in the JavaScript API, and then we're going to go into publish and presence and state and history. Um, before I do that, uh, I'll just jump out uh, of the slides here real quick and go into the browser. So. As part of the links that uh, were sent out for you um, in this in this webinar, uh, we sent out a link to the PubNub uh, real-time chat application uh, that has been developed uh, for this particular webinar, uh, and that's available at github.io uh, forward slash PubNub JS course. Uh, and this is the sample chat app uh, that we're going to be developing uh, or walking through rather. Uh, it's pretty basic. Uh, it's not meant to be a production application. It just gives you uh, some of the core concepts and, and tries to do it in such a way that it doesn't convolute uh, PubNub with uh, other libraries such as jQuery or uh, Bootstrap and so on. Um, very, very simple. It shows you how many people are online. Uh, it shows you their name. Uh, it gives you a chat window where you can uh, send chat messages and then a, a text box here that you can send messages on. It's and there I am. Okay, um, so you're welcome to go up and log into that and, and play with it. And the code is obviously available out at uh, GitHub. And there was a link sent out uh, in the webinar for uh, finding the GitHub repository. You can use this however you uh, see fit. Uh, you can branch off of it. Uh, you can download it and repurpose it, um, or just look at it for an example. It does use all the core concepts that we're going to be uh, covering here today. So, all right. So, init and subscribe. So, when you want to develop a, a PubNub application, first you're going to you know, do all your concept, your design, your architecture, and so on. Uh, and then, when you land on a solution, let's say it's JavaScript, as in this webinar, uh, you're going to pull down the JavaScript SDK. Uh, so, we deploy the JavaScript SDK to a CDN. Uh, which is cdn.pubnub.com, uh, and we actually version our SDK. So it's PubNub dash some version. Uh, we have a minified version, and we have a uh, non-minified version for uh, development. And here we're showing uh, how to add a reference to the PubNub JavaScript library within your application. So just a simple script tag, uh, HTTP, cdn, pubnub.com, pubnub, 3-7 or 3.7.12.min.js, and that will import the minified version of the PubNub SDK. Uh, you want to ensure that you have this version stamp there. If you omit the version stamp and just simply put PubNub.js, you'll land on a very old version uh, and you'll have some issues. Uh, we, we chose to start versioning the SDK to allow people to lock down their applications uh, so that they had some uh, level of predictability um, with uh, with the SDK that they're importing. Uh, other options, uh, HTTPS, uh, you can also use uh, SSL to grab that uh, library down. Okay, or you know you can always use uh, just the two forward slashes cdn.pubnet.com and that will uh, tell the browser to use the protocol used uh, when the page was actually pulled up. So. 
init after you download the SDK and uh, you have that in your body tag, uh, which is one thing I wanted to mention, you do want to import this probably at the bottom or within the body tag, not in the head tag. Um, and, and that's just because uh, other, otherwise uh, you're, you're risking having the browser uh, lock while it's loading in the script and it'll make your page uh, load very, very slow. So knit and subscribe. After you've downloaded uh, the SDK and you have your script tag in, the next thing you're going to want to do is initialize the SDK. And what that means is we're going to configure the SDK uh, with your publish key and your subscribe key. Uh, and there are other options available in the init uh, method that will dictate the behavior of the SDK. You get your publish and subscribe keys from pubnub.com. If you sign up for an account, uh, you create an application, you'll get a publish and subscribe key there. Uh, it's a long uh, UUID looking value and you'll just supply them in the pubnub init method. Uh, you'll notice that this is a full uppercase pubnub uh, and uh, that's a static object that's in our SDK, so it's exported from our SDK. Uh, and then we're calling the init method, and we're passing in a hash or an object uh, into that method and uh, simply uh, laying out the publish key and the subscribe key uh, here. All of the methods within the SDK uh, accept a hash as the argument, so you'll get very used to that. Um, it's a pattern that we use uh, for each one of the methods uh, that we expose. Okay. You want to instantiate one instance of the PubNub SDK. Uh, in, in most cases, you don't want to re an instance. Uh, an instance of PubNub is how you're going to be identified uh, by presence, and we'll get into that in just a little while. Uh, so if you have a page refresh, you want to ensure that you're using the same UUIDs and so on. You don't want to re PubNub uh, several times within one page. All right. There are many other options in init. Uh, such as specifying a UUID, uh, whether or not to use SSL, and then there's some restore options for handling uh, uh, short-term connectivity issues that may occur within a browser. Okay. <clears throat> Once you've initialized uh, the SDK, the next thing you're going to want to do is subscribe to a channel. Okay, and a channel again is just uh, how we determine the destination for a message. Channels are dynamic. They, uh, they exist when somebody subscribes to a channel and they go away when there's nobody subscribed to the channel. It's not something that needs to be configured or created uh, using a portal. Uh, there's really, uh, there, there are some rules around what the channel name needs to be. However, for the most part, uh, these are dynamic concepts and uh, you simply use a name uh, and specify that as your channel uh, and then others can subscribe to that channel by using that name. Okay. All right. And then we have uh, a callback. A uh, callback is uh, what's going to be invoked when a message arrives on that channel. And here we have callback colon function M, uh, which is just the message that's going to, uh, that was received. Uh, and in this particular case, we're just logging it out uh, to the screen. Okay. All right. You can subscribe to multiple channels in a single connection. Okay, so in this particular case, we're patching in our hash, as I said. Uh, we're specifying a comma delimited list of channel names, uh, and that will subscribe to each one of these channels. Uh, and then the callback signature is slightly different if you need to subscribe to multiple channels. Uh, in this particular case, we're uh, receiving a message, an envelope, and the channel, uh, so that you'll know which channel sent the message or, or which channel caused your callback to be invoked. Uh, the envelope is the full payload that's been sent, uh, and then the message is just whatever you've sent across the, the wire. Okay. All right. Within subscribe, uh, there are also life cycle methods. So within subscribe, when you create a channel and you have your callback, uh, there are also some life cycle methods and error uh, handling methods that you can uh, pass along with your subscribe call that will be invoked at various times uh, in the lifecycle of uh, using PubNub. Uh, the first one is your error. 
uh, this is what's going to be invoked when there's some kind of an error. Most of the time, this would be the result of a connectivity failure, um, either because your Wi-Fi has went down or the customer is swapping IPs. Uh, you can receive an error callback. There's a connect and disconnect. This will uh, be invoked. These two methods will be invoked when you initially connect to a particular uh, initially connect to your first channel not to every channel but initially connect to your first channel so connect in this particular case on subscribe would be invoked when you connect to the first channel uh, and then you have con disconnect which will be invoked when you disconnect from a particular channel and if you're reconnecting because you're restoring your subscription a reconnect callback will be uh, invoked okay uh, make sure you override these methods, even if it's just to simply log out uh, that they've been invoked. A lot of times when you're debugging your application, uh, it's much easier to diagnose what's happening uh, if you have these methods overridden uh, and you're logging that data out to the screen uh, so that you can kind of see the flow of events that are occurring. Okay, so ensure that you, you uh, definitely override these. Um, error is going to be invoked. That doesn't mean there's a PubNub error. That could mean that there's a, a connectivity issue. And within browsers, uh, that's a real possibility and, and very, very normal. Uh, so ensure whatever solution you come up with uh, that you're implementing your error handler and you're, you're implementing a robust error handler. Um, in some cases, you can receive an error uh, and then try to resubscribe. In other cases, you might want to notify the user that a connectivity issue exists, uh, but whatever the case, ensure you implement uh, your error handler, okay? All right, so let's uh, hop over to the code uh, and I'll walk through uh, the implementation of the chat app uh, as it applies to init and subscribe. All right. All right, here we have, and I'm gonna make my font just a tad bit bigger. Uh, see right here. This is uh, that uh, PubNub.js course uh, repo that I downloaded and it's a very, very simple repository. Uh, the entire application is implemented in two files. It's index uh, and then there's a app.js file that handles all the UI. If I were implementing this to go out to production, I probably wouldn't do it exactly this way, but I wanted to separate UI code from the PubNub code and the UI code is very um, uh, yeah, verbose and, and it's not optimized whatsoever. Uh, it's very, very simplistic. So just keep that in mind. Um, some of the things in here you probably wouldn't want to do uh, and I'll try to point them out um, as I come across them. The index HTML is where most of the code is implemented. Uh, and then we have bootstrap and a CSS file just to handle some of the UI elements. HTML is very, very simple. Uh, I'm just linking in some style sheets here at the top, and then I have a few divs to handle the, uh, the, the sections on the screen, the presence, the chat window, and so, so on. Okay. No inline JavaScript or anything like that. Uh, and then we get down to the bottom of the, the, the file, and we have all of our imported JavaScript. So here I'm importing jQuery because I'm using Bootstrap, and there were some dependencies. Uh, I'm importing a version of the PubNub SDK. In this case, I'm using 3.7.11. Uh, 3.7.12 is the current version, so make sure you're using the current version. Okay. And then I'm implementing or, or importing my app.js, and that's just to handle some of the UI. I have one function here uh, that's a script. And it's an anonymous function that executes when the page loads. Uh, and what this basically does is it throws all the hooks in place uh, so that your real-time application uh, works. Okay. I'll jump down to my init method. This is your lab one or, or the first part of the, the course. I'm instantiating an instance of PubNub using the static object PubNub from the SDK and I'm passing in a subscribe key and a publish key. And in my case, the sub key and the pub key our demo keys. We have a few demo keys here at PubNub that we use for demo app demo applications. So if you see latency on this uh, particular channel, uh, it's probably because we're on a throttled key uh, and uh, we're, we're experiencing high load. Uh, but in my case, it's demo 36, demo 36. So that's what I pass in as my subscribe key and my publish key. 
if all I'm doing is subscribing and listening to data, the minimal amount for this init method would be my subscribe key. But because I'm, I'm also publishing data in this application, I'm passing in my publish key. The third option down here uh, that you see is a UUID, and let me explain the UUID. When you instantiate an instance of PubNub and you're communicating with the PubNub infrastructure, we identify you by a UUID, uh, which is you know, a universally unique identifier. Uh, it doesn't have to be a UUID, but it has to be a unique string. Uh, from a presence perspective, and we'll get to presence in a little bit, uh, the UUID is how we identify you. Okay, and in some cases it could also uh, have to do with billing, but that's a, a, a different topic. All right. So what I'm doing is I'm actually passing in a UUID, all right, and I'm getting that UUID from two locations. I'm first checking local storage to see if a UUID, a UUID exists, and the way I'm doing that is I'm using the subkey plus the UUID. Uh, this is the way the SDK stores uh, your UUID in local storage, and I'm checking to see if that UUID is there. All right. If it's not there, here I've got this conditional, uh, then I'm creating a UUID. Okay. If this were a production application, I would probably use a user ID or a user ID for the UUID, um, but this isn't a production application, so I'm just generating a generic UUID. The key point, though, is you want to make sure that you reuse the UUID. And the reason being is if somebody refreshes the browser, then this script is going to execute again. And if you don't use the same UUID, then you look like a new user uh, to PubNub. So this is a web-specific issue, but uh, the key point, check for the UUID in local storage. If it doesn't exist, create it. And if uh, once you create it, you want to store it, okay? All right, so here we have uh, PubNub, init, subscribe key, publish key, and I'm passing in my UUID. There's also SSL, uh, if you're using uh, SSL, and there's a windowing uh, argument as well that will control uh, how subscriptions work, and there's documentation available on that. Then I have my subscribe method. The subscribe method in, in the app here is a little bit long because uh, it has to do with history and some other things uh, that we'll be looking at as we move forward. Uh, but I'm subscribing to a channel called chat channel, which is a variable with the value of webinar chat. I'm passing in a restore parameter, and this tells the SDK that in the event that I've been disconnected, when you resubscribe, try to restore the subscription from the last message received. I'm passing in a time token to tell it where to start receiving messages from. I'm overriding my connect function, and uh, we'll get into the implementation of that. I have a disconnect with just a simple log. I have a reconnect uh, with a simple, simple log, and then I have a callback. The callback is what's going to be invoked when a message is received. So when somebody sends a chat message across the uh, webinar chat channel, what's going to happen is for everybody that's looking at that application, this callback is going to be invoked, uh, and the callback is going to be passed, the message, an envelope, and a channel. And I'm using those uh, that data here to populate the screen. So. In my case, I'm grabbing a time token. We'll get to that in a little while, but I'm using that to uh, format and display my dates. I'm formatting the time token here. I'm grabbing the message text, the message from, the message avatar. So the message going across the wire is any valid JSON, and, and in my case, I have a couple attributes in the message, the text, the from, and the avatar, and then I'm adding that uh, to the UI. And here's my add chat message, message text, format of time, from user, avatar, okay? And that's how you subscribe. At a very basic level, it's just initialize and then subscribe, uh, channel, channel name, and at minimum, a callback, okay? All right, moving forward.
Let's see. All right, just to, to take a very quick um, look at the questions that we have coming in, and at the end of each section, I'll be doing this. All right, look like we have uh, any right now. Okay, all right. So uh, moving forward, we're going to go, we, we did initialize and subscribe. So again, you're going to download the SDK, in, uh, insert it into your body tag or somewhere at the bottom of your screen. Uh, and then you're going to initialize uh, the PubNub uh, instance and you want to pass in a UUID there um, and at minimum your subscribe key. Once you have that, then you're going to subscribe to a channel, which is just a name that we use to determine a destination for a message um, or a point of consumption for a message. And once you do that, you'll have a, a very quick application that uh, subscribes to a channel and receives messages. Okay. We're going to move on uh, forward here into uh, publish. And publish is uh, the inverse of the subscribe, so this is where we're going to send messages from your application out to a channel for others to consume. Okay. Publish, uh, very, very simple method. Provide to mean to send messages to all subscribers on a specific channel. Okay, so anybody subscribed to that channel is going to receive the message that's being sent. Uh, again, we're using the same instance of PubNub that we uh, instantiated in the in the last walkthrough. We're calling the publish method. Again, it's a hash parameter. It accepts the name of a channel and a message, and this can be a text string or or a JSON uh, object. Okay. And by doing this, by calling this method, your, all subscribers on the chat room ABC uh, will receive the message in real time. Okay. If you're sending JSON, which I believe most of you will uh, be sending JSON, do not use JSON stringify as uh, before you send the message. Just send the, the JSON object. We'll take care of doing the JSON stringify on your behalf if you uh, do you stringify, what will happen is you'll see a lot of new quotes and backslashes in your message and it's not uh, not pretty. So please don't use JSON stringify uh, before you send the message, just pass in the object. And here we have an example of that. Publish channel, chat room ABC, message sender Joe, message hello. Okay. There are callbacks. For every publish uh, or most uh, of the methods coming out of the SDK, you can pass in or override a callback and uh, that will be invoked when your message has been published. Okay, Not when it's received, but when it's been published. All right. And that's uh, being shown here. So we have callback and error. Callbacks let you know uh, what, what's happening. Uh, so here in this particular case, we have callback. It's passed in the message that was actually sent. Um, or in the event that there's an error publishing the message uh, because of connectivity or some other issue uh, with formatting the, the data that you're sending, uh, you'll receive an error callback. Please override the callbacks uh, and the error. Uh, as a part of, a, again, diagnosing issues with your application, even having a console log in here uh, will help you out. Okay. All right. Uh, in some cases, you might want to retry a publish if a publish fails uh, because of, again, uh, shoddy connectivity, especially if you're using something like PhoneGap or you're, you're on 3G. Uh, sometimes those messages will fail just because connectivity isn't good. Uh, you'll get an error callback, and a lot of times the, the right response is to attempt to republish that uh, message again. When you publish a, uh, a message, you're going to receive data in your callback, uh, and it's going to look similar to this. It's going to be an array uh, that gives you a flag determining whether or not it's been successful, uh, and then a message and, and a time token. So a time token is what we use at PubNub. Uh, it's just a, uh, a timestamp uh, to uh, identify when a message has actually been published. Um, in our case, in our chat application, you'll notice when you send a message, uh, it tells you who sent it and when they sent it, and I'm formatting and, and, and showing that by using the timestamp uh, of the, when the message was received. You'll also use the time, I'm sorry, not timestamp, but time token of when the message was uh, received. You can also use the time tokens to go back and search through history to retrieve messages that may have been missed um, or that you may want to uh, review. And so if it's a successful publish, uh, you'll receive a response similar to this, uh, which is uh, 
showing one cent and then a time token. If it's failed, uh, it will be a zero. It will give you some indication as to why the, the message failed to publish, uh, and again, also a time token. Uh, in, in this example, the message is greater than 32 kilobytes, which is the maximum size of, of message going across PubNub, uh, so therefore the message was not published. All right, so let's look at uh, published code. I'm going to jump out back over to Sublime. All right, so publishing is, is pretty straightforward. Uh, there's our subscribe, and I'm going to go down uh, to my publish method. And here's my publish function. And uh, with publish, what we're going to, uh, what we do is I, I just grab the data that's in the input box on the screen. So that's at the bottom of the screen. Uh, once I get that text, I put together a JSON packet. You can use whatever you want, uh, however many attributes or embedded attributes you want, and, and it's completely up to you. The schema is completely up to the app developer. Uh, there, there really are no requirements other than it needs to be uh, valid uh, JSON in order to go across the wire. Then I invoke the publish method right here. I pass in chat channel as my channel name. It's a required parameter. I assign a message that I want to publish, and then I have two callbacks. And in my case, all I'm doing is logging the message out uh, or logging out that a message has been sent. Um, for your application, you want to implement whatever makes sense for you. Um, but definitely ensure that you override these two uh, callbacks. And then I clear out the message text UI element so that you can send another message. I grab the send button select uh, using a query selector here, and I just assign the on click of that uh, send button uh, to the publish function, and that's how you publish. Very very straightforward. It's not uh, super complex. Uh, I guess the limitation is that you're going to want to publish to one channel at a time, not to multiple channels. If you have to uh, publish to multiple channels, you'll have to publish to each one individually uh, using a loop. Uh, but other than that, uh, it's very straightforward. All right, hopping back over. All right, so now, uh, given where we're at in the webinar, you should be able to import the SDK, initialize the SDK with your pub sub key and a UUID, uh, subscribe to a channel, which is just a destination for a message or a point of consumption for a message completely dynamic. Uh, they exist when somebody subscribes, they go away when nobody subscribes. Um, and publish a message to that channel for others to consume. So just giving that by itself, if I were to look at the application, let's go back over there, just by itself, we would implement our, we would have, have implemented so far uh, the chat window here for all the uh, chat uh, messages to be viewed and publishing of message. And there we go. Okay. All right. Let's uh, take a look, see if I have any questions in the queue here. How is, uh, let's say uh, from Paul, how is PhoneGap related to connectivity issues on connectivity recognizing in the Navigator object? Oh, okay, so what I mean by when you're using PhoneGap, a lot of folks like to use PhoneGap as a mobile solution because they, they uh, inherit the cross-platform capability of that platform. Um, however, in mobile applications, connectivity is often an issue. Uh, you could have folks that are on 3G out in the field um, and in that case, uh, sometimes when you're trying to send a message because we are communicating via HTTP back to PubNub, uh, you could have a failed message or your subscription uh, could be invalid. Um, but you would check for that connectivity using the objects available to you. Um, it just, all I meant was that 
on mobile applications, connectivity is often an issue. So ensure that you override the error, error, handle, uh, error callback uh, and handle those issues. Hope that uh, resolves that. So uh, next question from uh, Hina. Was, so if I send a message uh, via published, and there's an example of uh, some JSON, yeah. would I be able to receive the message uh, just by the callback? Yes, yes. Uh, so if you send a message with the JSON, uh, then you'd be able to receive the message uh, by assigning uh, the callback. Yes. All right. Let's see, we have Gary Summator and uh, both. Okay. So let me see if I can find your question, Gary. Um, Okay, so can you use it uh, with Meteor? Um, I'm not familiar with the Meteor platform, um, but uh, it, you know this may be better handled if we just send in a, a support ticket uh, and we can do some research and, and get back to you. All right. All right. Looks like that's uh, all the questions we have at the moment. Uh, so we're going to continue on. So now we know how to initialize and subscribe and publish messages. The next thing you're going to want to know in a chat app or in other applications is who is on a channel, who's listening uh, to a channel, and what state are they in. Uh, so presence and state is up next. Presence uh, provides an ability for you to monitor when folks join or when devices, when applications, when they join a particular channel. So in our case, uh, for our single channel uh, uh, chat application, you'll notice that you see everybody's name on the left-hand side. Uh, that data is actually coming from presence. Uh, and when somebody joins a channel, there's an event that's fired and it's received very, very similar to a pub sub. Um, and I take that data and I put it into that left uh, div channel. And when, when somebody leaves a channel, uh, there's an event that occurs and I remove them from that div channel. Okay. So it's very, very simple to implement or to use presence within the JavaScript SDK. Uh, we simply assign a presence callback. So similar to the callback we did for uh, subscribing and receiving messages, uh, we simply assign uh, the value to a presence attribute within the hash being passed in to subscribe. Uh, and you'll have a function that accepts a message and you can do uh, what you need to do uh, with the messages that are being sent to you. Um, very, very straightforward. It, it doesn't get much more complex as far as the coding uh, to listen to presence. Uh, and there's a couple different events that are significant for presence. There's a join event, it happens when somebody joins a channel, a leave event, uh, when somebody leaves a channel, okay, and that's uh, triggered by an unsubscribe, keep that in mind, uh, there's a timeout and a state change. Timeout occurs when somebody is listening to a channel, there's a heartbeat behind the scenes that uh, pings PubNub and uh, lets PubNub know that they're still listening to the channel. Um, but when somebody is listening to a channel and then that heartbeat fails and they haven't unsubscribed, after a period of time, you're going to receive a timeout. Okay. State change. Uh, state is uh, a, a generic mechanism for uh, conveying state of a particular listener to all of those listening for presence on that particular channel. Uh, so if you wanted to uh, allow your users to um, go on mute or um, uh, put a do not disturb sign up. You might want to use pres our state in order to do that uh, by passing a state parameter uh, with a state call uh, and others will receive that on the channel. And we actually do use that in the uh, sample chat application. I'll walk through that. Payloads. Uh, so for the join event, and all the events are, are very, very similar, but for the join event, uh, this is a join event payload. Uh, it's a JSON object. It has an action, and in this particular case, it's going to be join. If the event is leave timeout, um, then it will have that as the action. Uh, it has a timestamp, and that's the time token that I mentioned earlier. It will have a UUID, 
uh, who triggered the join event to occur. So, for example, when a user joins the chat application and I sign the UUID uh, in my init, uh, what will happen is a join event will be uh, triggered and everybody that's on the channel will receive that join event and the UI updates. It will give you an occupancy count, so how many people are online, and if you look at our sample application, you'll notice at the top I have a uh, online indicator. Uh, I'm getting that from that value. And then in some cases, the joint event will also have uh, state associated with it if state was supplied uh, when the user joined uh, the channel, okay? Uh, and that's an uh, a argument on the subscribe call, and we'll take a look at that. There's a couple other methods uh, that are valuable uh, to have within the presence API. Uh, there's a here now. So if you join a chat channel and you want to know who else is on that channel at a given time, um, so after you've sent out your join event, the next thing you're going to want to do is who else is online with me. Uh, we have a here now call and that will give you uh, information on who's on a particular channel. You have a where now call. Uh, if you know a particular user is online and you want to see the channels that that user is currently subscribed to, uh, you can use a where now. So uh, for those of you that like playing games, a lot of times you'll uh, log into a game and uh, you'll have a buddy on your game and they'll be in different parts of the, the universe. Uh, where now is, is something that could be used to implement a feature such as that. Okay. Uh, state. Uh, state is just what your current state is, and uh, there's some caveats to state, and I'll get into that when we walk through the code. So here uh, again, state uh, allows you to uh, convey state to others on the channel, and uh, we do that by adding a state attribute to our subscribe call, and we pass in any JSON object uh, to represent the state. Uh, that we want conveyed to the other users on the uh, channel. Now, if you have logged in and your state uh, was sent on your first join event and then you have a connectivity issue and you send the same exact state again the next time you subscribe, the state will not be present on the join event. So this is a, a, a caveat that you need to be aware of. State is only propagated to users on a channel when it's changed. So if you logged in once and your name was Craig and you were in San Francisco and then you logged in again a minute later because of some connectivity issue and your name is still Craig and you're still in San Francisco, the second joint event that comes across will not have uh, a state associated with it even if it's being passed and subscribed. Okay? Uh, and in the sample application, uh, I'll show you how I kind of worked around that. Uh, it's not a defect, it's, a, it's actually by design because uh, propagating this data to everybody all the time uh, would get very, very chatty uh, and wouldn't really be effective. Um, but it's something to keep aware of, uh, be aware of, okay? All right, to get state. Uh, anytime you want to get the state of a particular user, and we do this in the, in the application, uh, you use the state call. You specify the channel, so state is unique to a given UUID on a given channel. So user 123 might have a different state on another channel. Okay, and that uh, allows you very, very fine, fine grain control of uh, how you uh, use state. Okay, so here we just specify a channel. We specify a UUID, uh, and by doing that, uh, the SDK will then go out to the PubNub infrastructure, uh, retrieve the state for that given user if, if they exist, uh, and send back a callback, okay? And that will give you that user state. So in this case, if Craig subscribed and Craig uh, sent his state as name Craig in city San Francisco, and then we specified Craig's UUID in the state call, uh, what will happen is the callback will be invoked with Craig's data. Uh, and then you can use that as you see fit. So getting a state, getting state of a user, specify a UUID, and a channel and a callback. Okay. To set your own state or to set the state of a particular user, uh, you would call the state method again, specify which channel you want to set state on, which UUID uh, you want to set state for, uh, and then pass in state. 
So in this particular case, I would be setting the state of user 123 uh, and passing in mood excited. Okay. So instead of Craig being from San Francisco, now he would just have mood excited um, as his state. And again, same thing, callback and an error. Always implement those two. Uh, if, if nothing else, simply log out a message just so that you know uh, they're being invoked. Okay. All right, so let's take a look at uh, some of the code for state. I go back. So we have a couple places for state, and I'm going to go all the way up to the top here. I think I um, actually took it out. So here, this is still my subscribe call, okay? And if I continue to scroll down on my subscribe call, you'll notice that I'm passing an attribute called my state on subscribe. So again, for my first join to this channel, if I have yet to set state previously, and that state has not changed, then a join event will be triggered, and whatever data is here will be present in that join event, okay? So this is uh, one way to set state, and that would be when I subscribe. Okay. The other way to do it is to uh, send a state update, and I have a function down here uh, that retrieves the information from the dialog box at the top of the chat app. I'll just go over and show you that real fast. So there's a little uh, button here in the chat application. And if you click it, you'll get a dialog uh, box and you specify a name. And specify your location and hit save changes. And when you hit save changes in this particular case, what I'm doing is I'm using the UUID of uh, this instance of PubNub, so the local instance here, the, or the, the uh, uh, UUID that I was assigned, and I'm sending a state update uh, to the server, okay? And so now I went from being Fred to Silly Rabbit. So what happened is I sent the state update, it was received, and when I received it, I updated the list here, okay? All right. So here we have the send uh, state update. I just grab that data from that dialog box. Um, I grab some information from local storage for your profile. You'll probably want to integrate this with your own profile data store. Uh, and then I call the state method with the channel, the UUID, and I pass in the state. Very, very straightforward, not very complex. Um, the caveats are, again, you want to make sure that you don't necessarily rely on state being sent in your subscribe call, um, you you want to actually get state, um, and uh, I'll show you how to do that now. So again, for presence, I'm assigning a presence callback. I have some conditional statements here. I'm checking to see if I'm getting a state change. I'm handling that state change. So when I update it, my name, this is what was triggered. Um, if I'm getting a join then what I do, instead of relying on state coming down as part of a join event, I just turn around and say, okay, somebody joined my channel, and I go back to PubNub and I say, give me the state for that particular user. Uh, and then when I receive that state, it's callback. Callback is invoked, and I handle that, uh, I handle the state change. And that just updates the presence div that's on the left-hand side of the screen. Uh, something to mention here that I, I haven't mentioned it is asynchronous. You're working in an asynchronous environment. So uh, realize that even though you call state until this callback is actually invoked, that call is not complete. However, your code's gonna continue to execute. So again, use your callbacks uh, to determine whether or not the call has been completed on the PubNub side. Um, it is an asynchronous environment. Okay, all right. Continuing on, I, I, so for joint events, I just grab their state, and then if I get a timeout or a leave, then I just remove them uh, from my presence div. 
Again, timeout is going to occur when somebody simply walks away from their computer, uh, and doesn't close their browser, and connectivity fails, um, or they close their browser without unsubscribing. Uh, that's when a timeout's going to occur, and usually this is several minutes um, after a heartbeat has failed. So there's a heartbeat behind the scenes that, that is pinging PubNub on a periodic basis, and it's configurable. Uh, and if that heartbeat fails, if that heartbeat is not received by the server, uh, then that particular UUID will go into a, a pending state of, of being timed out. Uh, and if a, a period of time elapses, I believe it's uh, five minutes by default, um, that timeout will be issued and you'll receive a timeout event. Now, leave is slightly different. If you unsubscribe from a channel and you're using presence, uh, if you unsubscribe from a channel, it will trigger off a leave event, and everybody that's listening for presence on that channel will receive a leave event. Uh, very important that if you have an application that you properly unsubscribe from your channels, if you're planning on using presence and need to know when somebody leaves a channel, okay? So, uh, in, in, uh, Again, leave event will be triggered when you unsubscribe uh, from a channel. If you don't unsubscribe, you're not going to get a leave event. All right. All right. So, just a review uh, based on what we've went through so far. We've uh, downloaded the SDK, imported it into the body. We've initialized the SDK with our publish and subscribe key uh, and a UUID. We check the local storage for a UUID first. Uh, if it's there, we use that. If not, we generate one. Okay. Uh, we've subscribed to a channel, the web, uh, chat webinar channel, and here in this uh, window is the result of that uh, subscription. And then uh, we published messages using the publish method. Uh, and assigning callbacks and errors, obviously, uh, to that method. We passed in either a string or valid JSON. Don't use JSON stringify, uh, just pass in the object. Uh, and then we took a look at presence. How do we know who's listening to a channel? And you can see the result of that here on this left div. Uh, and we're also using the occupancy count uh, for a, um, uh, of, of presence to display the number of users within a channel. Hey, Caesar. <laughs> All right, so moving on. Uh, let's see if we have any questions. Okay, it didn't look like any questions coming in. All right, so at this point, you could send messages. If you were in development of this application, you could uh, you would be to the point of being able to send messages and waiting for uh, presence and state events to occur, okay? All right, so now, uh, where are we? Uh, now we're gonna go into history. So history is also referred to as storage and playback uh, if you're from a portal, um, and it allows you to retrieve messages that have been sent when you were not online. Okay, so that if, uh, for example, somebody refreshes a page in a web environment, when you refresh the page, your script's going to execute again, uh, which means you could miss a message there. So you're going to want to use history um, in order to retrieve those missing messages and display them uh, to your users. Or if you're doing audits and you want to retrieve uh, messages from last week, you can do that. Uh, and you do that by using the history API and a time token. Uh, very uh, straightforward. Some, some caveats, and we'll get into that here. So history, um, as you might have guessed already, uh, it's a very simple function called history um, off of the instance of PubNub that we initialized way back in the first walkthrough. And you pass in a channel. Uh, history is unique to a given channel, and you can only retrieve history for one channel at a time. Uh, you pass in a channel and a callback. These are the minimum. Uh, two arguments that you can supply to history, uh, and we'll get into uh, how we filter or determine the direction of history next. Uh, but just given what we have here on the screen, this would retrieve the last 100 most recently published messages on a given channel. So if, uh, for example, you're using the chat app and you close the tab and then you come back five minutes later, um, you're going to want to know what happened when you were gone, and what I would do is use the last time token, which is in local storage, and 
ask history to give me all the messages uh, from that last time token. Okay. The response payload is, uh, is an array that has three elements. Uh, the zero element is the messages themselves. The first element is the oldest time token, and the second element is the newest time token. Now, these time tokens are included in history for very uh, particular purpose. There's a maximum on history, uh, and the maximum is 100 messages. So if you wanted to retrieve all the messages that happen within a 24-hour period, I'm pretty sure you'd have over 100 messages. In that case, uh, you would want to generate a time token, and there's a formula for doing that, uh, to go back 24 hours and you would ask history uh, to get the last or the, the most recent 100 messages and then you would use the oldest or the newest uh, uh, time token to go even further back. You would make consecutive history calls uh, until you've caught up all the messages within the chat app. Okay, So that's why those are there. Uh, and again, the first uh, first element or zero element is the messages themselves. You can limit the count. If you just want to get the last 10 messages, there's an attribute with the name count, uh, and you can assign an integer value to that. Uh, here in this particular case, uh, we're using uh, 10. So this would return the last 10 messages uh, that have been sent to that particular channel, in this case, chat underscore room underscore ABC. And uh, you can use a start and an end, um, but uh, it, before we get to that, you can create your own time token or convert uh, the current time into a time token. Here's the formula for doing that, and if you're looking for it in the app, uh, within app.js, and I'll take you in there, uh, there's a method that does this, okay? Uh, but in this particular case, we're doing five minutes ago, so we're grabbing the current time, uh, we're running some math across it, uh, and that will create a time token for us, and uh, we're showing the result of that here. All right, limiting uh, what's being sent back. So I could also say, give me the last 10 messages, but start at this particular time. So start always returns messages older than the provided time token. So in this particular case, we're asking for the messages older than this uh, time token. And in, in this case, uh, if you remember, I didn't specify a count, so it's gonna return the last 100 uh, messages uh, within the channel. Now, if there's only 50, you'll get 50. Uh, if there's over 100, you're only going to get 100, and you'll have to use the time tokens being returned on history to go further back. Uh, but in this particular case, give me all the messages older than this particular time token. And, uh, and returns messages newer than the provided time token. Uh, so in this case, again, we're going back to the chat room ABC. Uh, we have our callback, and then we have our time token being specified um, as end, okay? And that will retrieve the last 100 messages newer uh, than this time token. Start and end um, always returns messages in that range. Uh, so you can actually filter if you want to get the last five within a range of time tokens. Uh, you can do that. Uh, same as uh, the last two calls. You can also specify a count uh, to suppress uh, or, or limit the number of messages coming back. Start is exclusive and end is inclusive. Okay. Um, all right. We're getting there. Reverse. Okay. So reverse. When when reverse is true, which uh, is is not the default. Uh, it returns messages from the beginning of time, so the oldest messages. Uh, otherwise, it's going to get the most recent messages. So if you're wanting to go back to the beginning of time, you would actually specify reverse, okay? But it doesn't change the sort order of the returned messages coming back. Other attribute is include time token. Uh, if you need to know when a message was sent, and we do this in the chat app, uh, there is an argument uh, that you can include called include time token, or include token, I'm sorry. Uh, and if you specify a true value for that, uh, it will include 
the time token within that zero element of the history being returned uh, so that you can determine when messages were sent. Uh, so in our case, we're using that value to format the date and timestamp uh, shown above the message, uh, so I do use it. Okay. All right, so let's walk through uh, history. All right, so in our app, uh, we go back to our subscribe, and uh, you know, again, this is a very simple app, and uh, it's it's not hugely complex, but this is the way that you would use history uh, in an application. You can use it in any way you see fit, but particularly for chat, whenever I connect to my first channel, uh, if if it's the result of a resubscribe or if I've recently come in uh, to the chat application, I want to grab the history of uh, the channel uh, that I'm, I'm viewing. So here I have history, I'm passing in a hash, the channel name, I'm telling history where to start, so I'm giving it the last time token. Let me show you how to get that. So the last time token is in local storage. The SDK actually does write that value to local storage um, under the value of your subscription key. So in our case, it's demo-36, uh, and that's the last time token. Okay. The last time token means the last messages, message that was successfully received uh, from PubNub based on you know previous subscriptions. So in that case, I'm calling history, I'm passing in my channel name, I'm, I'm telling it where to start, I'm telling it how many messages I want to get back, please include the time token uh, with that result, and then I've assigned my callback. And if you remember, the zero element is the actual messages being returned, and I'm saying for each one of those messages, execute the following code. I'm checking to make sure I have an object. Uh, probably don't need to do that as much, but uh, this was a safe way to do it just to ensure I had the right object. Um, if your schema changes on your channel, this may be something that you want to do. Um, I'm grabbing the message value and the time token, and then I'm reusing uh, my method to add a chat message to the window. So what this will do is whenever I refresh the screen, let me hop over to that real fast. If I refresh the screen, I'm making uh, history calls uh, to grab history and, and repopulate this div. If I didn't have that history call there, then when I refresh the screen, everything here would be blank. Okay, uh, so that's the way you want to deal uh, with browser refreshes uh, within the web uh, and real-time apps. Okay. All right, here we go. So that's very, very simple call just grabbing that data. There's also a playback method that you can use to playback uh, history uh, values. Okay. Oh. Let me go back over here. All right, so we took a look at the history. Uh, so we've been through quite a bit this morning and uh, we, we've made record time. I'm gonna stop and, and jump over to uh, the question window here. So I'm gonna start from the bottom here and I have one from Dennis. Uh, if I'm sending messages 80 bit every 20 milliseconds after one minute 50% of the message were lost, the check history, and then there are two. I'm sure it, okay. Well, in this particular case, Dennis, I, I would actually submit a, a support ticket uh, and we would be happy to help you out, okay? All right, uh, Vinit, uh, how would you get history from multiple channels? Uh, the best way to do it is just to loop through each channel. You know, if I go back over to my code here, um, if I need to get history from multiple channels, I'd, you know, do a for loop here of some sort, and for each channel that I need to get history from, I would get history from it. Uh, that's one way to do it. Another way to do it is to get history as needed. Uh, for most of our applications, uh, our clients out there doing things with chat and, and even other devices, uh, you're gonna have more than one channel. They're dynamic and channels are cheap, use them. Um, you're gonna have more than one channel. So 
uh, if you need to get history from more than one channel, what you would want to do is, uh, if you want to make it somewhat efficient, only get the history for the channels that are absolutely necessary when, when they're needed. Uh, so do a lazy load of history. History takes a little more time than real-time pub sub uh, because it's actually going back to storage and, and reading that stuff from disk, uh, whereas pub sub is coming out of uh, real-time you know, infrastructure and cache. Uh, but to implement, uh, to get history from multiple channels, you'd want to loop through a list of the channels and, and grab history for each one, okay? But it's one channel at a time. All right. Is there any way to retrieve more than 100 messages? Uh, again, no. Uh, at the moment, the 100 is the maximum on a, one, any given particular uh, history call, uh, but you would want to use the time tokens that are returned as part of each history call and iterate back until you get uh, where you need to be. Okay. All right. All right. So just to review, uh, we've went through pulling in the SDK, initializing and subscribing to a channel, publishing a message, listening to the channel to see who's on and who uh, who's as, as people join and leave the channel. And then we've uh, reviewed uh, history so that we can retrieve messages from storage uh, and refresh the screen or, or provide an up-to-date view of a, a given channel, okay? All right, so some resources for you. Uh, this was uh, very quick, but uh, we, we went through it and went through some of the basic concepts of PubNub. Uh, however, we do have a knowledge base out there at knowledge-base, pubnub.com knowledge base, uh, where there's a collection of articles and, and uh, quick snippets on how to accomplish some of the most basic or some of the most common tasks that you might want to accomplish with PubNub. We have a developer community uh, that you can post messages or questions to, and uh, myself and, and other staff members uh, are here to help, and we monitor that channel, and we can answer those questions for you. Sometimes we respond with, hey, go ahead and submit a support ticket so that we can uh, you know, gather resources and take a little more time uh, to review an issue with you, uh, but it's a good place to start. And then we have a support form, a support email, uh, if you go to support.pubnub.com, that will get you to a, a form where you can fill out uh, your basic information and problem description, and that will create a support ticket for us, uh, which myself or uh, Craig or uh, some of the other staff members will uh, respond to. Or you can simply send an email to support at pubnub.com. Uh, we do love hearing from customers, and, and we definitely want to uh, be on board to help you out. So, you know, if you do have a question, please do submit it to support. Um, we try to do our best to get back to people as quickly as possible, and uh, we do a pretty good job at that. So feel free to submit a support ticket. Uh, docs, demos, and SDK, uh, pubnub.com forward slash developers. Uh, there's uh, docs, demos, and SDKs there. Uh, we've recently released a whole uh, new set of documentation for our SDKs, uh, making it pretty easy to follow along. Um, so I would encourage everybody to uh, review that and, and visit the developer site uh, to find out the latest and greatest SDKs and uh, information, okay? Questions, uh, so this is a time uh, where you can ask questions, so please, if you have questions, go ahead and pop them into the question box and we'll see if we can get to them. Okay, so here's one with uh, for, from Eric. What happens if I refresh the page, a new instance of PubNub will be created? Yes, that's correct. Uh, if you refresh the page, you're going to create a new instance of PubNub. But what makes that instance of PubNub the same as the instance prior is the assignment of a UUID. So if you instantiate an instance of PubNub uh, and you pass the same UUID that you used before, then from our perspective and from a presence perspective, you're still the same person. But if you fail to assign the UUID, uh, then you'll look like a new person or a new user on the PubNub side. Um, but yeah, it will definitely instantiate a new instance. Uh, you know, it's JavaScript, so it, it's going to be instantiated, um, whether you like it or not. Mm -hmm. All right. 
Any other questions? All right. Okay. All right. Uh, so again, if you have any questions or you have uh, you need further clarification or you're trying to uh, uh, find somebody to uh, throw some ideas at, please do uh, submit a support ticket, support at pubnub.com, uh, and we would love to help you out. And don't forget uh, that there is a quick survey um, at the end of the course that allows you to give us some feedback on how the webinar uh, went and maybe add uh, or give you a chance to uh, to uh, point out areas where you, you'd like to see more information or less or, or whatnot. Uh, so please do do the survey. Uh, we also do have uh, the a few new webinars uh, coming up uh, towards the end of the month. So on July 15th, uh, which is uh, coming up here very shortly, we have an Android webinar and we'll be reviewing the Android SDK. And then on the 28th, uh, we'll be doing the iOS SDK. So very similar to what you see here today, uh, but we'll use a different platform uh, to, uh, to show how you can implement a chat application with those SDK. Uh, so please do sign up for uh, those uh, webinars and uh, I hope to see you soon.